Hello folks, Brandon Chapman. This is uh, another video for Theotrade. It is uh, October 30th, uh, 2023, just before our, uh, our retreat in Delray Beach, uh, Florida. Uh, for those that are going to be attending here, this is going to be great to, to have you. It's going to be a good week. It's going to be a fun week uh, to be able to break bread together. Anyway, uh, financials pump ahead of the FOMC. What do they know? Is there something out there? I mean, you look at the top performing sectors today. You see XLF, that's financials. And you've got communication stocks, so part of that. You've got Charter in the mix here. You've got Verizon. Uh, a lot of very dividend-oriented names. And you've got your banks uh, in here as well. You've got your financial companies like Goldman Sachs. So you kind of see what's leading out today in the market. And uh, it makes you wonder, what do they know? Uh, we have the FOMC statement on Wednesday. We've got Bank of Japan uh, coming up tonight. Uh, a lot of stuff that could move it. And the key to all this may actually be the dollar what happens in terms of a potential reflation, or are we talking about more stagnation and higher interest rates? Anyway, all that's kind of coming up this week. We'll get a, have a chance to be able to see what's going to happen there. Uh, but the ES futures are up 1.17%. Again, you can see the leading and lagging sectors. Uh, of course, XLRE, uh, it's real estate bringing up the tail end here. Again, all this stuff is pretty oversold in the near term, even energy Saw a pretty big sell-off here and testing its low uh, going back to October 5th. So a lot of things setting up for a potential bounce here. So encouraging to see that the market you know, is able to gain some footing uh, am amongst all of this stuff. So as we have a chance to get bid, we have a major print here at about 421.25. We'll see how we can address that level. So may we rally going into the, the statement or the announcement on, on Wednesday and then the press conference you know, what, what can transpire here, at least for today, some anticipation that uh, the Bank of Japan may end uh, their yield curve control policy. Um, this is something where they're basically capping uh, JGBs, Japanese government bonds, at a rate of 1%. Do they release that? That's been long been rumored for the last couple of months that they're going to ease up on the yield curve control. And then next year, they may pull back on some of their purchases they're buying Japanese government bonds, they're buying ETFs, they're buying a bunch of stuff out there, they own a bunch of the market as well, and uh, certainly that's probably where the Fed will go at some point. They already stepped into buying ETFs and, and corporate bonds. It's not a far cry from buying corporate stock or stock-based ETFs, equity-based ETFs. So a lot of stuff kind of kind of coming through the ringer this week. And again, Bank of Japan may be a key. You'll see the yen did break out here slightly today uh, from that kind of rising wedge. We'll see if there's any more traction. Do they pull back on policy that has really led to some pretty substantial weakness at a time where the yen should be performing well? I mean, how the market's performed, you'd imagine the yen probably should have been closer to 115 than where it is right now at 150. Uh, normally, you see that carry trade reverse, but in reality, um, they, they, had a, they had a new election and they've had a new uh, prime minister, or whatever, they, whatever, that, whatever their leader is. And, and they really took a tact back here in early 22 that, that uh, you know, looked that we're going to really kind of create inflation, right? Uh, extend money to, um, uh, pr uh, to you know, more, uh, more generally rather than just focusing on markets. And, and as a function, the yen has lost a tremendous amount of its value, but it's back up against highs not seen since, you know, October of 2022. And this certainly seems like a pretty key point where that may reverse. Ironically enough, that reversal may be coming as the market's showing strength, which normally the yen strengthens as the market's weakens, as the carry trade reverses. Is this different this time? A, a lot of stuff is really kind of disjointed at the moment. This is one of those things where it may have to establish more order by coming in before it really is going to be reflective of that reversal in the carry trade that's generally negative for U.S. assets. So a lot of stuff coming up here that in the, the Bank of Japan probably has one of the biggest potential to move markets uh, with their overnight announcement. As we look forward to the FOMC statement, you know, probably not a lot of there there, right? I mean, we have a sense that uh, the Fed is going to keep interest rates the same at five and a quarter to five and a half percent. And that's probably not the biggest thing, right? The interest rate policy side of it it's probably going to be more, what adjustments do they make in their statement? What does Powell say in his press conference? What, what are they going to do in terms of maybe tempering some of the more hawkish sentiment of, of higher rates long for long, okay, and other things that may help kind of keep the market on edge? Do they soften this? And this is where, you know, again, going back to financial companies here, uh, you know, this is, this is kind of a big deal in that, look, I mean, are they saying, look, we may... 
they may be willing to soften some of their policy or the hawkish sentiment? Is this going to cause yields to maybe uh, normalize a little bit to the downside? And why would that normally be beneficial for financials? Well, it's not in terms of lending. But we have a problem in terms of unrealized losses. And that's really caused some pretty, hard, pretty big pain uh, for regional banks in uh, March of this year. And so the idea is that these banks are sitting on a lot of unrealized losses in the Treasury market. Is there the possibility here that the Fed may articulate something that could generate a short squeeze in bonds? And that's something that could be big. You know, very, very high short interest in the Treasury bond market. You know, forward slash ZB is the futures for 30 years, or you could like TLT, it's a 20 to 30 year ETF. You know, there may be significant upside here if, again, if they kind of back, back away from or back down from some of their more hawkish policy stance. And as you look at how things are setting up here, December 46 days out, and as we look at the volatility term structure, it's very flat out here. So you can easily take an upside call spread, and there's not really any edge in it, but there's not really any detriment either. You know, like an 84, 86 or an 85, 87. I mean, what's the potential that bonds could rally rather significantly? Again, all it takes is starting to generate a bit of a short squeeze and we could quickly find ourselves at 90. And so the idea here is that as we look at what's going on in the bond market, the potential for a big move here, uh, if you read and you see the rising volatility out here is that there's a lot of call option buying out here. You know, basically anticipating that treasuries may rally as the shorts get squeezed or squoze, whichever you would prefer to, see, to use there. And so as we're kind of testing lows down here, again, does this help banks from the perspective of they own a lot of treasuries and there's a lot of unrealized losses in these treasuries. So the more the treasuries rise, the less of a, less of a loss they would have on the unrealized loss and may help them in the near term. And again, we look at Goldman Sachs up nearly 4% off its lows. And that may be kind of a near term story as the yield curve uh, uh, flattens, you know, as the Fed holds policy at five and a quarter, five and a half percent, and as yields fall in long term treasuries, that ultimately hurts banks in terms of their ability to lend. But right now, they have a solvency problem, right? They have a problem with, you know, at least the holdings they have and the unrealized losses they have in them is a major problem. And again, so I'm watching this week and watching to see if treasuries can break out. And uh, so, again, easy to construct an upside spread here you know, 85.90, right? I'm like that, you know, certainly there's premium to be sold out here. Uh, the volatility at 22.6 is slightly higher than the 85. That's a $5 spread and it only costs you, you know, probably about what, uh, maybe about a buck 50 on a $5 spread. So the risk and reward is very favorable on upside. I generally keep these like $2 wide that costs you about 75 cents at an 85.87. So again, pretty good probability we have a chance of touching 87 or slightly higher and if we get there, 87-ish, uh, you know, you look, if volatility comes in a little bit, you might be at 60, 70% of max, uh, 60 to 70% of return on risk. You may have to push a little bit higher in order to get you to a higher return. But, uh, but I think that's kind of an interesting trade setup for this week. And again, financials, though, as we look at banks, in the bigger picture, I mean, is there a lot to be said about Bank of America or Citigroup? So while treasuries may bounce, we may see a little bit of relief for banks. And for like something like Citigroup today, that was a rather significant amount of uh, trade on the December 35s here. Um, you know, right, th sorry, right there, uh, getting rolled down from the, the 38s on Citigroup. It was a 3 no of a 38 as well. So the idea is that, look, we're seeing this kind of activity out here to the downside. But there's been a lot on Bank of America last week. And uh, so it certainly makes sense that banks eventually will break the upside. But we could see a near-term rally here. And if we really start to show some strength, there's probably opportunity to take those downside swings in banks again. So if you think you're bullish on banks, you know, maybe look at treasuries as a trigger and uh, then look at for the setup as we start to rally into highs, looking for that reversal uh, in these names. Now, obviously, if we're seeing treasuries go down and yield, that's generally pretty positive for gold, for example, which gold has seen a nice little rally here, nice breakout on Friday. Could there be more upside in gold and silver for that matter? Uh, trade today in Hecla Mining. This is uh, on the heels last week of GDX. Um, Hecla, um, shoot, uh, um, uh, Pan American Silver. I mean, none of these really saw a tremendous boost today. Pan American tried to, uh, tried to wrap gap and then faded. But this is an area to watch. So if we start to see real weakness in the dollar, 
gold should perform well. So really what this is telling us, the dollar in real terms was higher today. Does the Fed do something to compromise that? And we see a rally, which historically, you know, November and December and early January is generally pretty bullish for gold. Do we see another leg higher? Well, if we look at Hecla Mining, uh, kind of coming off our lows here, um, if we look at the trade tab today in Hecla Mining, um, you'll see this a March expiration. So there's not a lot of gamma here in this because it's not going to, because it's so far out in time. But uh, 22,000 contracts mostly bought at the seven strikes. So again, we're seeing buying of calls way out of the money here. And, uh, you know, in a number of months, it possibly got seven. Absolutely. And we look at some of these rallies back here, you know, five to seven. You know, that took about a, a little bit over a month. I mean, things can move quickly and progress quickly, and that's a March expiration. Now, uh, for this, again, you could buy in March, and that's pretty far out of the money here. Uh, you might consider going with something shorter dated, like maybe a January, and buying something a little closer to the money, maybe even slightly in the money, like a $4 strike price. And this should hold its, uh, should hold pretty well. But guess what? Look at the volatility, how it's rising as we go down the money. There's something to be sold out here, even like a $450, $550, uh, long uh, long call vertical, twenty cent cost, uh, one dollar wide spread, eighty cent max gain, and that's if we do what if we get to uh, about five fifty, which is about right here. So, again, some bullish trade setting up in in uh, um, in in mining companies, particularly gold and silver, and the commodities themselves. And so again, it makes it, it makes it kind of an interesting play on specifically dollar weakness. Now, again, sometimes you see dollar weakness in terms of uh, against the euro or or the or the or the, or the you know uh, uh, the yen or whatever, um, but sometimes gold will slide because the relative strength of dollar is strong, but we're actually fading in real terms against something like gold. So watch gold is kind of a key following the Fed announcement this week, and that could give us kind of an indication of direction uh, on that. Um, as we look at uh, um, another play potentially in some dollar weaknesses, uh, EWZ. Uh, the Brazilian ETF is down today. Um, the Aussie slash US dollar, this is my proxy for, uh, uh, for the dollar against emerging market. But this really has kind of a heavier weighting towards China. Um, again, higher today on the Aussie. So again, the weakness we're seeing in, in uh, EWZ, probably largely due to what? If we look at forward slash CL, we're seeing weakness in oil uh, down uh, about 3.5% today. But we do know that the oil market is still in backwardation meaning we're seeing falling prices as we move out of the future. Not as steep as it was previously. Uh, the supply situation in the United States is pretty dire here. So certainly the, the risk is still to the upside in energy. So probably not an area you really want to go bearish on. But again, you could see if the dollar begins to weaken and oil begins to per perk up, EWZ or particularly Petrobras, uh, Petróleo Brasileiro, um, this is one to watch on a potential breakout here this week. Again, keying off of higher energy prices and oil prices and a weaker dollar. So look at gold rising. Uh, this is an area that could really spark just like we saw back on the 6th of October. So we're watching for some unusual option activity trade in PBR specifically, but we are seeing it today in EWZ. And for EWZ, we're seeing it on the 3 Nov 3050. Uh, so again, just this week, four days left. We're seeing right here, it's, uh, it's down to the money a little bit. Oh, sorry, it's the call side. <laughs> Look at the wrong side. 3050, again, we're seeing that uh, kind of explosion of activity here, for, at least for this stock specifically. But upside interest, in, and again, 30, 3050, 3150 up here. So again, we could see a nice little break towards, what, 32 and a half? And as you look at the uh, spread pricing here, 15 December, um, you'll notice that, again, it's, uh, it's falling a little bit here. But again, you can see that we're kind of leveling out at around 30% ish here, you know, 32, 34 would be reasonable. Um, again, that's pushing towards prior highs. Uh, otherwise, you could look for something a little bit closer to the current price, uh, a 30 strike price, 32%. You know, there's even, you know, there's not much to be sold at 35, but, uh, you know, again, keeping it 30, 32, a little bit of an impairment there. But uh, again, it's designed to try to play that upside swing in the price um, if the dollar starts to turn around. So, Again, something to watch today, kind of in that mining space. And again, a weaker dollar. What, what will be the impact on something like ASHR? Uh, bullish option activity last week on FXI on the 24th, kind of drifted for a day, then rallied back up. I walked through some uh, trade in, the, in this, uh, uh, on this specific ETF or FXI, KWEB, uh, late last week. And again, we're seeing it was up today about 1.5%. There may be a little bit more to be had here. And whether it's Asher, FXI, or KWEB, 
Again, you're seeing that as kind of a trade here for December at the 26 strike, and the vol structure is pretty flat out here. You could buy a 26, sell a 28, uh, cost you very little. Probably if you're you know, going to buy the, the 26, the, there's not a lot there. Probably just buy the 26, maybe sell the 27, but that costs you about 24 cents on a $1 white spread. That's at the 27 strike. You come down to 25 even, slightly in the money here, 94, sell the 27. You're in it for about 72 cents. Again, the vol is not too different. So 26, 27, 25, 27, 26 here, looking at uh, 26 to 27 as the upside here in the next 45 days. So again, the pricing is not terrible for something like that. And we're seeing kind of that flow of trade into these companies. Uh, again, is this based on a weaker dollar, maybe stronger treasury market? So a couple of different angles to take here, but again, it's going to take a little confirmation to see how it's responding to the Bank of Japan announcement tonight. Uh, and again, what's going to happen with the FOMC on Wednesday. It's been a pleasure. You have a great one. Thank you.